went well with the defense last night? Um, really just, you know, the care factor. You know, we all was tied together throughout the game from start to finish, you know. It looked iffy in the third quarter, just like Coach said, but we figured it out and we made the adjustments that we needed to be able to withstand, like, the final push that, the, that Philly was going to make. So really just all in all, you know, we communicated, we cared, we was there for each other, and the energy was great. So play after play, we was just there. We was ready for it. Can you elaborate on those adjustments and maybe who's the one I was just saying, hey, you guys are doing this, or somebody on the court? Uh, it was a little bit of both, you know. We, you know, then we was trying to get back on track, and for us to get back on track, I would say, us fixing the things that we was lacking on the defensive end was one of the main things. So, you know, guys locked in, coach had told us to lock in. So it was basically a little bit of the best of both worlds with it. So we all locked in together. We figured it out, and we made that final push defensively at the last couple of minutes in the game. What's been working for you guys for paint defensively? Really just physicality, you know, setting the tone physically, you know, not letting guys come in, get offensive rebounds, protecting the paint, you know, blocking shots, so on and so forth. You know, just having that mindset of really just protecting home, that's the main thing. Yeah, what um, difference has Denny made in the second unit? How does he shift things at all? I mean, you know, he comes in and he does his job, you know, with him. Like when it comes to whoever he's guarding, you know, he logs in, he might get frustrated from time to time, but he got guys that'll come in and that'll help him lock in a little bit more and be in his ear to tell him just everything is going to be okay. You know, then he comes in, he throws his hands around and stuff, you know, but you know, he's a young player, so he's learning as the days go by. And just for him being in the second unit, it helps us out a lot defensively too because he's coming in guarding the best player on the floor at the time. Can you say throws his hands around. You mean when he's whistled for a foul that he doesn't agree with oh, yeah, or when of course. he's defending? Yeah, of course. You know, I, I'm, I didn't have the same, you know, habits and stuff doing that to the refs and whatnot, but I've learned, you know, in the long run, if you keep doing that to the refs, they're not going to respect you <laughs> sooner or later. So I just tell him from time to time, just keep your head. It's a lot of calls that you're not going to agree with. It's a lot of calls that are going to be BS, but you just got to live with it, you know? In all seriousness, I think that's an Eastern European thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, there's a different basketball culture in yeah. terms of how you respond to refereeing. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm not trying to make a joke. Yeah, no, no, no. I've, I've seen that a lot with a lot of, you know, guys from overseas and stuff. They have their own way that they deal with the refs. I'm pretty sure the refs overseas have a different way of dealing with guys like that, too. So. Last, last night, you did a great job of, of punishing your offensive mismatches. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see a mismatch, how do you make sure that you are in a position to catch a pass uh, when someone is ready to throw it to you so you can take advantage? Oh, uh, really just the physicality, you know, not playing as small as, uh, you know, the mismatch that is on me, you know, really just being in a position to where I can call for the ball, you know, not being scared or anything. And just like, if I feel like I'm in a position to where I can score and just calling for the ball and then guys know that I'm open in that situation, you know, a closed mouth don't get fed, you know, a little southern thing that my mom and stuff used to always say. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know, being in the right place at the right time, catching the ball high and being strong and finishing over top. What can you guys do to limit KD? Mm -hmm. KD. Uh, really just. <laughs> it was a quick question, my bad. But uh, really just, you know, pay attention to detail and just limit him being playing free. You know, we got to up the pressure. We got to give him as, you know, much of a hard time as we possibly can. He's a great scorer, great player, obviously, and it's going to be hard to really do that. But if we lock in defensively together as a team, I feel like we'll have a pretty good chance to do that. For sure. I'm, I'm sure you probably weren't necessarily the happiest with your play in the past few games, I guess. Just how much yesterday was it Wes talking to you, a teammate talking to you, you just locking in better? What do you think made the difference? I helped out a lot from just everybody to talk to me, you know, because obviously I was frustrated from the last two games before this recent game in Philly. And I just had to kind of like reset myself, you know, frustrated about a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, I just had to clear my head and go out and play ball. That's the main thing. No matter if I had a lot of minutes, no matter if I had a little bit amount of minutes, you know, just go out and just give 110%. That was the main thing. Getting back to the things that I was doing before I got here, when I got here, and just being good at those things as I'm trying to progress as a player too. What were some of those areas that you were frustrated with yourself on that, that you were looking to get back to? Really all in all just you know my lack of effort you know I felt like I was just out there just running up and down the floor not really doing anything and not really helping the team so I really just had to lock in to be able to be able to make sure that I fixed that. I didn't want to come out and be you know the loose loose end that everybody was gonna like find to make sure that they scored on me or anything like that. I had to up the energy, I had to come out and I had to lock in mentally to help me out just so I can help out the team for sure. How valuable was Todd speaking speaking up after Monday's game? It was good. It was good. It was very well needed too because you know the back to backs that we had, the Boston and Philly back to back, it was it was tough. You know, the locker room 
it was a bit weird, you know, we were trying to figure things out, losing games that we felt like we shouldn't have lost, of course, and really just, you know, having somebody come in and just say the things that Todd said shows that we got guys in the locker room that actually care. And we got guys in the locker room that's gonna do whatever it takes to uplift the team and motivate us to be able to come out the next game and play way better than what we did the night before. 68 points yesterday. How do you replicate that same kind of attack against Brooklyn? Really just have the same uh, the same approach with it, you know, have the same level of physicality, if not more, and really just go out and just play ball. Not really just letting anything, you know, frustrate us, get in our way. If there's any obstacle, we're going to work as a team to get through that or get over that. So that was, that, that's the main thing, I would say. Really just trying to be consistent in that area, I would say. Daniel, there's probably no one on this team more qualified to evaluate a shot block uh, than you. Yeah. Uh, what did you think was the best shot block by a teammate last night? Last night? Of course, Denny. He had a couple of great blocks last night. You know, I'm not going to say mine because mine was a borderline goal team, of course. <laughs> Everybody says that, but here's what it is. Mine is second. But Denny, you know, he showed, he showed a lot of... I would say tenacity when it came to blocking shots. You know, he was going, he was guarding one of the best guys in the world that's out there on the floor, James Harden. He was guarding him, he was guarding Tobias Harris, he was guarding Maxie, he was basically guarding everybody. And really just protecting the rim is something that he's, you know, done a lot better at. So I gave him a little bit of tips too if he gets if he gets a block on the backboard to try to pull it down and then stare guys down. Just don't get a tank. <laughs> I think that's another difference between European players. They do a little less staring down than yeah. Yeah, of course. But staring down of other players and more staring down of referees. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take it out on the refs instead of the players, which is weird. I don't know why. <laughs> they also, like, there's no block shots in the Euro League. Like, if you have, like, one block a game, you lead the league. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised Denny is out here getting more blocks than me. It's crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> um, by the way, I'm going to send a tweet. Daniel Gafford on Kevin Durant. Who? Yeah, that's the headline. That's the headline, Gaff. <laughs> how tough was his chase down block to, for him to actually do? Remember that chase down block? Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the ones. I mean, he made a real good—he made a real good effort on the defensive end, and that was just one of the efforts that he made. You know, getting back on defense and making sure a guy doesn't get an easy basket in transition. It's one of the things that we need when it comes to just like trying to progress throughout the year. We need that type of effort. We need that type of care factor to go on throughout the season because that's going to take us a long way defensively, and that's going to help us out get easy baskets on the other end. Because with teams like you know Philly that you know weren't really, I would say, good in transition, you know, we get a stop on the defensive end and we run. Get out, easy offense, finish, and get back and have set defense on the other end too. With the 68 paint points last night, what did you like about how you all were able to dominate that area, and how do you replicate that or try to against a team like Brooklyn? Uh, yeah, I think we did a great job of moving the ball yesterday, and uh, that created a lot of opportunity. You know, Brad got a lot of catch and goes, which is which is good. Anytime you can get Brad some easy points, it's, it's awesome for us because he is a superstar that has to work really hard for his points. Um, our goal is always to try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, we haven't been doing a great job of that, but last night was a great opportunity for him. And then also, KP got it going, which is awesome for us. You know, 30 points and uh, him just shooting over the top of everybody is awesome. How much can Corey help you guys? Oh man, he's going to help us tremendously. I mean, you know, anytime that you can have someone who can spread the floor like he can. Or, um, also, he's a you know underrated defender as well. He works really hard. Um, people don't really see that a lot um, because of his ability to shoot the ball. Uh, but he works really hard on defense and um, also just from a morale standpoint, you know, he's a, he's great to have on the court. You know, he always lifts everyone's spirits and uh, everyone trusts him on the court. So it's going to be a good time. Koo said that he looked improved in training camp before he got hurt. I know he's had to deal with this injury, but uh, what have you noticed about his game so far? Uh, just making that year two jump. You know, it's, uh, his confidence was tremendously higher than last year. You know, in your rookie year, you're learning a lot. Um, you know, you're going through ups and downs that, you know, people don't really understand. Um, but he had a lot of confidence coming into this year. Um, I'm sure he's, he hasn't gone anywhere. You know, he knows he can play in this league and he knows he can dominate this league. So I'm really excited to see him back on the court. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's got a little bit of a restriction at first. But, you know, once everything is um, out in the open, I think it's going to be really good for us. Anthony, what was the um, message that Taj relayed to you guys the other night? He just told he told us we were doing a great job. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, Taj has been in this league for a long time, so has a lot of knowledge, and uh, he knows when teams are slipping. And we were getting comfortable, you know, at a really early stage, which is 
you know, not healthy. Um, so he got on to us, um, let us know, you know, we can't play for the, the names on our back. It's got to be about the Wizards, you know, what's on the front of the jersey. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with what he said. You know, he got on to each and every player, which is um, much needed. And um, we were able to come in the next game and have a, a good turnaround. Is he a type of guy who start yelling at or is he just... No, I, I think it was building up. You know, you can see him sometimes on the sidelines uh, just getting kind of antsy when we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And it was kind of a build up. Um, I saw it coming. Um, actually, he warned one of our coaches that it was about to happen. Uh, and then it, he kind of he kind of blew up, with, rightfully so. Though. Yes. <laughs> what do you remember about playing with Joe Harris in college? Did you have a good story? Joe Harris. Uh, no, I don't have any memory. No, I do this because Joe is so awkward with his hands. So like if you ever notice, maybe he's got some media training now, but if you go back into his uh, college, like college days, anytime he was doing an interview or he would talk, he would just like curl up his fingers like this. And like, it would be just so funny just to watch him. We always give him a hard time, but I used to love playing with Joe, man. Unbelievable player, unbelievable person, most first and foremost. And um, I'm excited to be back on the court with him tomorrow. Um, I'm happy for him also because, you know, he did have a, a rough season last year with the, the surgery and everything like that. So it's good to see him back on the court. And I'm excited to be on the court with him again. And um, this is going to come out of left field, but Yuta Watanabe also on the Mets. I know you played against him in college twice. Um, do you remember anything about those matchups? Did you guard him? And what, what do you think about Yuta? Um, I think our whole team guarded him in college. Yeah. And um, he, they actually beat us. Mm -hmm. It was um, actually turning point to our season. Do you remember that, Ava? Yeah, we went there to George Washington and they beat us. And it was not a good time. You know, Coach Bennett got really on to us at the end of the game, but uh, he had a great game and uh, he played really well. Um, you know, unbelievable player. As you can still see, he's still in the NBA, sticking for a long time because he plays hard and he's very talented. So. And it wasn't that long ago when you were still playing overseas, now obviously in the starting lineup on an NBA team? What was that moment? Did you get to celebrate with Jenna at all, anything like that, like soak it in for yourself? Uh, yes, I was definitely overseas, freezing my butt off in Moscow, <laughs> Russia. Um, but it was all worth it. You know, I'm back here in America with my family where everyone's comfortable. Um, everyone's having a great time. And I'm able to have my immediate family and my extended family come to see games. Um, but I was sitting in the bed the other night with my wife and I was just like, uh, we were praying. We pray every night before we go to bed. And I was just like so thankful and like just in my prayers with my wife, just saying like I'm so thankful that I got to even be in the NBA, let alone start in a game. If it's just one game that I ever started, that would be good enough. But um, I I'm so excited that, you know, if coach decides me to keep me in that starting lineup or changes, whatever it is, I'm excited that I just get to be on the court and help the guys out as much as I can. How's your finger? Uh, I have three more. It's all right, man. It's all right. We don't need it. Like it's, there's plenty of guys in the NBA that have four fingers, you know. So I'm just right now. I'm short one, so it's okay. <laughs> You're obviously a guy that wants to uplift, you know, all of your teammates. Whether it's you know coming out of every timeout, you know, dapping everybody up. I'm curious. Do you talk to Denny at all to make sure that? hey, you know, your role might be changing, but, you know, you're still an important part to our team. Yeah, Denny's my guy. And, and you know, the thing about it is his role's not changing that much. You know, he's, he's always going to be the guy who has to defend because he has that capability. Um, and if, again, if, if the ball goes in when he shoots it, uh, you know, that's great for our team. Um, but his, his bigger role is always defending the best player. Um, and that's, um, that's really what we need out of him. And, of course, there's ups and downs through the season. You know, everybody wants to score. You know, everybody wants to see on the box, the box score that they had, you know, such and such amount of points. But it's more important that we get the win. And I think he's starting to understand that. Um, and all we can do as, as teammates is encourage him and let him know, like, that game last night was amazing. You know, you did a great job defending everybody. And we're so proud of you. Keep it up. Don't get too caught up in what the box score is saying.